Hi, um, just going to go over another tutorial. Um, me and a colleague learnt something new this week, so I'm going to share it with you. Um, say this is a portfolio, for example, and these are just a couple of renderings that I've half done. Um, and as you can see, there's a green, there's purple, and there's orange. And maybe these are all different cars, but maybe if this was the same project and you've happened to render at different times and you're laying it out in your portfolio and you're like, ah, I want to change the green, I want to change the purple or whatever. Um, normally what you would do, like you, you go on your layer and you go to your hue section, oh sorry, it's desaturated, undo, you'd go command U to get your hue saturation or you'd go up to image adjustments, hue saturation. Um, so you do it through here. So you then bring this up, and depending on what layer you selected, you then say, "Okay, I'll just change the greens, and I'm going to make that become more of an orange, maybe." And I'm going to, saturation takes all the color out of it, so you can make it really bright, depending on how it's been rendered, and you could make it dark, as in black or white. Um, which is fine, you can do it like that, which is absolutely fine. And maybe if, you, if you're doing the master, it will just change the whole thing because these are all the colours that this is made up out of. So you might have to change the green, you might have to change a bit of yellow, you might have to change cyan, you know. So you could do it all one by one like that, which is fine. But what you'll notice is whatever change you make, it's it's then done. So if you run out of undos, which I just undo, if you run out, then that image is then, I'd say destroyed, but it's like it's permanently changed. So way to avoid this is for each one of these layers, I'm going to do an adjustment layer. Now an adjustment layer is, where is it in here? New adjustment layer. And all these are also down here next to the group folder. So if I was to click on here, I'll get the same list. What I want to do, I want to change the greens colour. So then I end up with a little box like so. But if I go back to my layers first, you'll notice you get a little icon and a mask. And it's always above um, whatever layer you previously were on when you selected to do that. So if I double click here, it'll take me back to this option box. And what you'll do, this little icon here makes it affect only the one layer below. If you don't check that box, it will change everything in Photoshop below it. So, say if I start to move this now, you notice all the images are changing. Which which could be fine, that might be the desired result you want to get. But the good thing about this, um, if I go back to my layer, I can turn that off and the originals are still there in their original condition. If I turn that back on, it's gone back to that change. So I can double click and again it says 96, so I can just put that back to zero. And it hasn't ruined those images, which is quite nice. If I were to click on this little box uh, button that looks like a box with an arrow out of it, go back to my layers, you notice a little arrow appears. Now that means it only affects that one's got underscored. So it's that layer one there it says under, it's got an underscore on it. That means that that will only affect that one layer. So if I go back into that now, and uh, I take out, uh, I'll leave that like that. But if I take out all the saturation on that image, it basically just removes all the colour and goes to grayscale, uh, which is, can be quite nice. I do like a good grayscale render. But also, I can pull that back to zero uh, with no issues. Maybe I want to change this to be more in line with what's going on down here. And you can play around with the settings, you can take all the saturation out of it. Make it a little bit darker, but then you see this is what this happens here. But again, I can just put it back to zero. I 
I can also do uh, the different individual colours. So you can play around with this until you find something that you're happy with. And because there's very little yellow, you see it's just a kind of a hot spot in here because that's the only real thing that's picking up as yellow. But again, I can just set that back to zero. And again, I can also just turn it off. Um, so that is hue and saturation. And with a mask as well. So if I change that to something drastic, like purple, and then I go back to the layer. On the mask, with the, when you click on it, your colors will go back to black and white automatically. If I use a black brush, nice soft airbrush, and I just start to paint black on that layer mask. you'll notice the green starting to come back through. So you can get like all kinds of crazy effects by doing this. Um, maybe if I just delete that and do another one. If I do black and white filter, and I click just on the, if I leave that for example like that, but use a mask where this is affecting everything at the minute. I can say I'll pick up on these sort of areas. So I'm just going to block on the actual mask with the black airbrush, reveal the green that's behind, maybe the green on here. Maybe I'll reveal the colour in here, although it's purple. And I'll reveal the roof in here. But then above here, I can do a hue saturation and I can just change that to look, look like a green. Just have to do the other way. And I'll bump up the saturation on that. And then maybe I'll do another one on top of the, the purple render. Then again, I'll just change saturation so it starts to go green. But then for this one, I only want it to change the one below. So back in those properties, I'll just click on that one. So it's not affecting that one there. It's only affecting the bottom left image. So now I'll do that and I'll just quickly try and find green. Then it's green. Bump up the saturation. Go back to my layer. And then on here. So you can get a nice sense of like focus and area that you want the the images to be popping off the page. Maybe just a little hint in there, really pop this out and maybe the grill. Maybe you only want the front of that one to work, maybe. Maybe it kind of leans into the back of that. But you get the idea. So that's how you can play with these and yet it doesn't destroy the image, you can always turn it on and off, which is quite good. And say if I'm happy with that, but I've made everything black and white. And come back in with the white and take out all the colour again. So there's, there's lots of different things you can do with it. Uh, let's say if I hide all these, I'm just going to duplicate this one. I'll just scale that up. So 
so maybe you can also do play around with the exposure of the image kind of play around with the hot spots and you can get some really cool effects just by simply playing with these settings bear in mind if you're using these in an actual rendering um, these renderings do come with a lot of layers so maybe that looks quite cool maybe you're looking for something like that then. and then maybe you could do something else on top of that maybe you could add a photo filter or something and you pick up on say a purpley colour let's just pick up red for some reason um, I'll just pick a colour out of here um, maybe you just go for a normal standard filter you can select through these filters depending on what you're looking for so these adjustment layers are really good for just quickly changing anything maybe you go back to your layers and you want to do a hue saturation and then you want to pick out the uh, it be yellow I really want to bump up the indicator so it just increase the saturation maybe and again you can always just turn these off you can always go back between them it is it's really helpful when you you need to change an image to suit the rest of the the work that's been done so if you're doing three quarter of top view and side view on a page and you want to arrange them you want to be in the same color adjustment layers are really good for that um maybe if we go back to the master on here and i'll change it to some kind of gray just by changing the hue and playing around with the saturation, you can get a nice sort of gunmetal grey, sort of bluey sort of colour. Or you can wash it out, maybe. They're all pretty cool to do. Um, let's just play around with some other ones. Maybe. Posterize is quite cool. It kind of turns it into there was a phase a couple of years ago where there used to be a lot of digital art done like that. And you can play around with that. Maybe you want that to be really extreme and maybe you go back to your layer and on the mask just kind of mask out where you want it to stop maybe. I don't know. Play around with them and have some fun with them. Maybe you want to invert the mask so it does it the other way around. And then you kind of get in this into focus, maybe. Um, Turn black and white, haven't we? So there's all these sort of things you can play around with um, or is it quite brightness and contrast so I can pump up the brightness and then I can reduce the contrast and wash it out or I can increase the contrast mm, yeah. maybe some of these are play around with the combination of them so at the minute all these are all just affecting whatever's blown whatever's turned on um, let's play around with them they are really good because it's what they call um, non-destructive editing make them mix up the channels
Uh, which one I want? We've done, we've done maybe the curves. So you get the idea anyway. Just thought I'd show you. Um, I think I'm, I've been a little bit addicted to them recently. Invert. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I haven't used that one yet. So basically all Invert is doing is just flipping the colour. So when you go to the colour wheel and um, it will just flip to the opposite side of the colour wheel and then obviously white becomes black and black becomes white. That's all that's doing. So that, that's pretty cool. No options for that, it's just straightforward swap. And then you can still do things on top of that. So maybe you can uh, move these around and play around with them. They're pretty cool. So yeah, play around with them um, and I'll leave it there. Cheers.